sorbents represent, in my view, the new frontier. And for this reason, I think this is a very important topic. Now, uremia and uh, other critical disease are called retention syndromes because there are accumulation of molecules that can be identified using mass spectrometry. And these molecules are not only urea, showing that uh, these retention syndromes uh, may uh, be caused by different solutes uh, that affect uh, different uh, uh, pathways in metabolism. The process of separation that we rely on is basically a separation by barrier, like dialysis or ultrafiltration. But as you can see here, we can also have a separation by solid agent called adsorption. So for this reason today, I'm going to take you into a journey from the bench where the sorbents are created, and then I take you to the bedside where sorbents are applied for extracorporeal therapies. In mass separation techniques uh, by barrier, we mostly use diffusion. But as you can see here, free diffusion coefficient uh, decrease progressively as solute molecular weight increase. You may have a different impact depending on protein binding or high filtration rates or electrical charges. But basically for larger solutes, diffusion is not efficient. And as you can see here, if you impose a membrane to the free diffusion in water, you further reduce free diffusion coefficient through the membrane. So another me method is required and it is convection. And for this reason, different membranes have been created with different sieving properties, trying to mimic the sieving coefficient curve of the human glomerulus, but still we are far from that. And in fact, uh, some molecules that are important for acute and chronic kidney disease are retained in the body. <clears throat> However, we discovered some years ago that the uh, membrane can be an active component and it can be indeed, uh, um, uh, it can be uh, utilized to absorb uh, some substances. And this was one of the first publication we did showing that on the membrane, uh, TNF alpha could be absorbed on the internal surface. So the mechanism we use today are basically diffusion, convection, and absorption, waiting for a possible bioartificial organs that include metabolism. Originally, we have added to the membrane mostly hemocompatibility, modifying the surface. Then we have modified porosity to change flux. And today we modify the uh, uh, surface with bioproperties and the capacity of absorbing. So coupling absorption with dialysis is a good idea, but instead of using the membrane for this purpose that can be maximally one or two square meter, we can use sorbent devices that actually may exploit up to 20,000 square meter of possible absorbing surface. The rationale for the use of sorbents is the limited efficiency of membrane separation processes, possibility of selectively remove some uh, uh, solutes, and the possibility to place the sorbent in direct contact with blood. There are also limitations in the sense the sorbent must be hemocompatible or coated. Site-dependent non-selective absorption may cause unwanted losses. For example, antibiotics can be removed and you have to take care of this aspect. And sorbent may alter the requirement for happening in the circuit. The history of sorbents goes back from 1850 when first inorganic aluminosilicates were used to exchange ammonia and calcium. 
And then through a series of uh, evolutions for water softeners, for ion exchange resins and application of porous polymers uh, that uh, were utilized uh, to remove specific substances, in the year 2000 and afterwards, uh, the improved design, coating, and increased hemocompatibility allowed to use sorbents in blood purification techniques such as hemoperfusion without uh, uh, major adverse events. In fact, hemoperfusion is a very simple technique where blood is circulated through a device that contains the sorbent that can be synthetic or natural. At the beginning, it was common to see chills, fevers, cutaneous rash, thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, luminum load. And in fact, uh, the uh, biocompatibility was an important issue. Today, requirements for an effective sorbent therapy are effective and safe sorbent material, adequately designed sorbent cartridge, and optimal utilization of the available surface of the sorbent. So what are the requirements for a suitable adsorbent material? First of all, high selectivity affinity to enable sharp separation, high capacity to minimize the amount of sorbent needed, favorable kinetics and transport properties for rapid sorption, chemical and thermal stability, low solubility in the contacting fluid, hardness and mechanical strength to prevent crushing and erosion, free-flowing tendency for ease filling and empty of the packet bed by the, the, the fluid phase, which in this case is blood, high resistance to fooling for long life and low solid interference, no tendency to promote undesirable chemical reaction or side effects, possibility of regeneration or relatively low cost. Sorbents can be natural or synthetic, and most of the sorbents we are utilizing today are synthetic, with difunctional monomers that are linked or highly functional monomers that are cross-linked by dividend benzene. Example of adsorbent materials can be polyamide fibers functionalized by DIA or polystyrenic fibers functionalized with polymixin B or copolymeric particles like styrene and dividend benzene cross-linked. As you can see here, the monomers can somehow create a three-dimensional polymeric network. And normally, the fractional porosity of the bed is 30 to 40 percent. Now, what is interesting about the sorbents is that they can come in fibers, granules, sphere, pellets, flakes, powder. Most of the sorbents we use uh, uh, for extracorporeal blood purification today are granules, like uh, beads in the range of uh, uh, approximately 200 microns. Uh, they are solid with high surface area, and they have a range of 300 to 1200 square meter per gram of single of, uh, of substance. So it is extremely uh, uh, capable of absorbing substances. And the resin can be macroporous, mesoporous, or microporous, depending on the diameter of the pores. I just don't want to go into the detail of the chemical, physical aspects, but pore diameter and length of the pores are important. Fractional particle porosity and particle density are also important. Specific surface area, of course, is important. As you can see here, approximately 1,000 square meter per gram. How do you calculate the capacity of absorption? Basically using isotherms. These are curves that uh, are measuring how much of the solute is removed from a selected solution, 
reaching a plateau value, describing the maximum capacity per gram of substance and the equilibrium stage for liquid absorption is achieved when this formula uh, equalizes the concentration in the uh, 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 blood entering the uh, uh, system and the blood leaving the system. Uh, this is an example of an experimental isotherm that we uh, carried out studying uh, vancomycin uh, uh, reduction using an HA380 uh, 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 solvent cartridge from Jafron, China. And you can see here a typical curve that is observed with a progressive decrease in uh, vancomycin concentration in the uh, uh, tested solution. For the absorption of a solute onto the porous surface, uh, uh, the following steps are required. An external phase called interphase, an internal phase where the uh, fluid phase goes inside the uh, pore of the bead, and finally surface diffusion and absorption on the porous surface. The external phase uh, uh, requires a, a uniform profile of the flow so that uh, uh, all the sorbent is utilized. And this can be achieved when spherical particles of equal size are utilized with the packing density between 40 and 60 percent so that the space for the flow is uh, giving uh, uh, the possibility for different tortoise paths. We studied uh, on the CT scan, uh, the flow distribution in uh, specific cartridges. And as you can see here, different cartridges can have uh, an absolute uh, utilization of all the sorbent available for exchanges because uh, there are no preferential flows that are observed uh, during the extracorporeal circulation. On the other hand, when you apply these sorbents in conjunction with the filter, <clears throat> you may see that uh, basically the stability of uh, arterial and pressure uh, uh, and venous pressures uh, demonstrate that basically the hydraulic of the circuit is very stable and the flow distribution is well maintained with no channeling phenomena. And here you can see how the flow is distributed uh, through the uh, 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 solvent. Mechanical strength is important uh, because uh, some particles may crack and this uh, prevents uh, dissemination of fragments uh, in blood, of course, but uh, we need the specific screens like support screens and retention screens that avoid the, uh, the uh, uh, passage of uh, beads or fragments of beads into the circulation. Uh, the effect of packing density and geometry has all already been discussed, but uh, I would like to mention the important aspect related to the fact that blood is a non-Newtonian fluid, and therefore there are two laws. One is Darcy law, the other is the kozeny karman equation that uh, affect the uh, uh, flow distribution inside the packing bed. Another important thing, is the design of the cartridge length and cross-sectional diameter. But cross-sectional diameter is mostly the cross-sectional diameter of the empty part not occupied by beads, which represents the uh, 60 uh, uh, to 40% uh, uh, of the entire volume, uh, depending on the packing density and the uh, pressure drop inside the cartridge is regulated by the hagen pose law, delta P, blood flow times A time, eta lambda uh, over uh, pi greco uh, R at the fourth power. So the radius of the cross-sectional area is extremely important. We also study the so-called mass transfer zone, which is uh, the zone where the maximum utilization of the sorbent is present and the no utilization of the sorbent is present. 
this distance ideally should be approximately one third of the length of the uh, device. In fact, as you can see here, the maximum efficiency is when you utilize all the sorbent available progressively. And you have a curve like this at different uh, treatment times. Uh, it will be extremely, um, let's say, um, not efficient if you have a length of the mass transfer zone as long as the cartridge or even longer than the cartridge that uh, uh, consider the possibility to find the so-called breakthrough condition uh, uh, in which the concentration of the sorbent since the beginning uh, goes through the venous uh, uh, side. So we calculate the saturation uh, uh, through a saturation curve that uh, becomes actually maximum uh, uh, towards the end of the treatment. And this is what characterizes the need for uh, changing the cartridge uh, when basically the concentration out versus in approximates the uh, unity. The internal phase is also important. Uh, and what is important is the penetration of the fluid phase inside the bead. And as you can see here, in some beads, the penetration is only very superficial. So there are several pores, channels that may not be used inside the, the uh, uh, spherical bead. What are the mechanisms? Well, we are using van der Waal forces which are weak and reversible, ionic bonds, typical of exchange ion reasons, and hydrophobic bonds, which are very strong and mostly irreversible. This is the structure of the sorbent and the intraphase condition, where you can see that the sorbent may have ions and counter ions that uh, exchange and absorb different solutes, also depending on the uh, uh, electrical charges and physical absorption is done through this and chemical absorption is also done through this uh, surface modification. Now, if you look at the typical uncoated charcoal, one of the first sorbents, you immediately see that the, the very rough surface is uh, mostly uh, making impossible to uh, put blood in direct contact uh, with this material because it would uh, stimulate uh, uh, platelet activation, coagulation, and uh, thrombosis of the circuit. So coating of the uh, sorbents uh, have been uh, made with different polymeric materials. And now we have resins that are extremely smooth on the surface, as you can see here, that can mm, be utilized to put in contact the raisin with the, the blood. And here you see at the different magnification, the surface and the porosity of the beads uh, with the internal pores. You can also see that at the end of the usage, there may be some fibrogen, uh, some fibrin, some proteins that are onto the surface. And this is what limits also the capacity of absorption of the system. Of course, coating may limit the, uh, 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 the diffusion and the transport of solutes through the solvent uh, channel. So, Coating has to be done very carefully with large pores. And we have new, membranes, new uh, uh, sorbents today called neutral macroporous resin. And because of the macroporous structure, as you can see here, the possibility to permeate the internal part and the interface of the transport is much enhanced. We studied, of course, biocompatibility of the new sorbents, and uh, we have used a specific machine called Galileo, which is uh, a testing machine for different cartridges. And what we have found was that different cartridges, both in static and dynamic tests, display no changes in viability of the U937 monocyte cell line, 
no changes in apoptosis, as you can see here, and no changes in the tendency to necrosis. So we can definitely consider the absolute uh, biocompatibility of uh, this material. And today we have a broad spectrum of absorption cartridges with different type of uh, 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 raisins that are utilized for different uh, uh, options. How do I use uh, sorbents in clinical practice? Well, first I can use it in direct hemoperfusion, circulation through a simple sorbent cartridge. I can use it in combination with uh, a CRRT filter, as you can see here. And I can use it in combination also with a hemodialysis filter, as you can in this case see a patient uh, with uh, a tremendous pruritus in which uh, uh, removal of some substances probably allowed to remove uh, the cause of the pruritus. And uh, this patient was treated uh, once a week uh, with hemoperfusion plus hemodialysis uh, for four weeks. And in fact, one of the issues that uh, uh, were uh, uh, affecting his quality of life, which was pruritus, was completely eliminated. Now you can see here that retention molecules may cause a different type of uh, symptomatology, such as restless leg, atherosclerosis, inflammation, hypertension, sleep disorders, hyperparathyroidism, and this type of solvent has been used to remove this in a combination with the dialyzer. Uh, there are several studies now, and more are underway. Uh, that display, for example, better quality of life, no adverse events, uh, advantage in survival, and removal, significant removal of different substances that normally are not removed uh, by classic uh, uh, emo via filtration and uh, uh, filtration uh, techniques uh, with uh, memory. Uh, this is another study using hemodialysis plus hemoperfusion that display a lower level of uh, uh, inflammation and lower level of uh, different uh, specific molecules that may affect outcomes in uh, chronic kidney disease patients with higher level of hemoglobin, less requirement of erythropoietin, more albumin, and more BMI showing that uh, this may be an interesting uh, new approach. There are other uh, uh, absorbent that have been utilized, like the Lixel is uh, from Kaneka. This is another uh, absorbent utilized mostly for beta-2 microglobulin. And it has been shown that uh, there is a significant effect on beta-2 microglobulin over time uh, when using Lixel plus hemodialysis. You can also utilize a plasma separation and go uh, through the sorbent uh, with uh, plasma instead of uh, blood. And in this case, you can use a specific sorbent for different purposes, such as uh, bilirubin or uh, uh, other types of molecules that are normally uh, uh, not, uh, not removed by direct hemoperfusion. Um, you can also put this in contact uh, with, the, in combination with the CRRT, what has been done, for example, in case of CPFA or fat hemodialysis. Now, direct contact with blood was utilized in different options, including sepsis, burns, trauma, cardiac surgery, ARDS, specifically in the context of COVID-19 and pancreatitis, and also in combination with the uh, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation uh, uh, circuits. As you can see here, the solvent circuit can be placed in parallel uh, with the ECMO uh, circuit. There is another treatment called Double Plasma Filtration Molecular Absorption System, DPMAS, which includes two types of sorbents and has been utilized especially for intoxication and liver disease, providing removal of various 
uh, uh, aromatic amino acid and other molecules. Of course, uh, it is important to make sure that you, the cytokines you're trying to remove reach the plasma filtrate. So we tested the plasma separation modules and indeed uh, plasma filtrate contains uh, the uh, substances you're trying to remove. Today, uh, art of hemoperfusion display a clear rational uh, overcoming limitation of dialysis membranes and the possibility of placing the sorbent in contact with blood is only, let's say, uh, uh, conditioned to a good hemocompatibility, which has been demonstrated. And you can put this in combination pre or post a filter for uh, dialysis or CRRT. Platelet changes are not an issue not an issue on leukocyte changes, nor albumin changes during treatment. But what is interesting is uh, that uh, we have uh, tried to study absorption in terms of uh, uh, new approaches called sequential integrated approach to sepsis. That includes, of course, infection and presence of the pathogen, presence of the endotoxin, cytokines with immunodysregulation, and finally organ failure. In the first phase, there are today sorbents that have been demonstrated to utilize specific removal uh, uh, substances where viral particles or bacterial particles can be removed from the plasma. This is the case uh, of uh, lactin affinity plasmapheresis, uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a specific, uh, in a specific uh, uh, condition. Another uh, sorbent that has been uh, <clears throat> placed to uh, the market today and is under investigation is the Seraf microbiome affinity blood filter, where basically you have high capacity of sorbent media containing uh, heparin sulfate, uh, which is mimicking uh, the surface of the pathogens and uh, removes uh, uh, apparently different type of uh, bacteria and viruses. But when you have uh, presence of endotoxin in the circuit, uh, there is another sorbent, uh, which is a polymyxin B uh, uh, coated uh, uh, styrenic fibers that are immobilized in a specific cartridge that you can see here and the specific extracorporeal circulation can be created to remove endotoxin. This has been shown to do this job, both in vitro and in vivo. It has been shown to have an impact on SOFA scores and 28 day survival in this study that we carried out in our institute. And uh, I must tell you that uh, one of the interesting aspects uh, of this uh, is that uh, a larger study that was performed called Euphrates did not meet the, uh, uh, the main uh, uh, endpoint. However, when the patients were studied, uh, modifying per protocol uh, different uh, uh, populations, it was shown that there was a different, significant difference of survival in patient with endotoxin between 0.6 and 0.9. Uh, this uh, endotoxin activity assay represents an important biomarker to trigger the application of uh, this uh, technique. And it has been shown that when patients are not in a, a very sick condition, they may not benefit. On the other hand, when they have a very high concentration of endotoxin, they might already be too sick to find an advantage. So there is a specific time and biological window to apply uh, uh, this technique. And in this case, you can find an increase in improvement in hemodynamics and SOFA score and reduced uh, uh, need for mechanical ventilation. And this is what has been found in this group of patients. Uh, there are other uh, absorbers for endotoxin, like the Alteco LPS absorber, which has been demonstrated to significantly decrease endotoxin activity during uh, extracorporeal therapy and decrease the requirement of noradrenaline infusion rate during treatment. 
Of course, when the <clears throat> pathogen and then finally the endotoxin is not blocked completely, you may have uh, uh, a hyperinflammation due to release of cytokines in the circulation, and patient may die for overwhelming inflammation early or late. But there are also patients uh, that uh, may die lately due to persistent immunosuppression uh, linked to the activation of the adaptive immunity against the innate immunity. So there are two say of different mediators that are pro and anti-inflammatory mediators. And in this case, uh, we have proposed that extracorporeal therapies can become an immunological support Unfortunately, the molecules we are dealing with are in the range that uh, no membrane dialysis can be as effective as adsorption. And that's why CRRT with adsorption in our hands has shown to be as specifically removing both pro and anti-inflammatory mediators, both in case of a sequential activation or simultaneous activation of innate and adaptive immunity, somehow restoring the condition of immunohomostasis. For this, uh, cytosorb is one of the sorbent that has been uh, utilized. Uh, I was involved uh, in the development of this uh, from the beginning of this century, and it has been shown the decrease in vasopressor and improvement uh, in procalcitonin in patients with sepsis. It has also been shown a significant reduction in pro-inflammatory mediators although no significant effects and mortality have been demonstrated yet. Uh, membranes can also be used to absorb, and this is the case of the modified uh, uh, AN69 membrane that has a special surface uh, 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 functionalized with polyethylene imine and has high capacity of absorption and has been utilized to demonstrate the capacity to remove both endotoxin and cytokines uh, uh, in vivo and in vitro. And you can see here the difference between oxidis and the classic AN69 surface treated membrane that uh, are significantly different. Uh, removal of endotoxin and cytokines in vivo has been demonstrated uh, over uh, uh, 24 hours uh, in uh, different patients, uh, but also a significant reduction in TNF-alpha and interleukin-6 has been demonstrated to show the capacity of reduction of uh, specific uh, uh, pro-inflammatory mediators. There are other membranes that can absorb, uh, such as the polymethyl metacrylate that uh, has been recently modified in a structure that is specifically designed to enhance absorption as much as possible, called hemophil. And finally, as I mentioned before, we have a variety of cartridges uh, produced by Jaffron uh, in Zuhai, China, that uh, can be utilized for end-stage kidney disease, acute poisoning, immune disease, critical disease, hepatic failure, bilirubin absorption, and other conditions. Um, in particular, the uh, uh, cartridge HA330 and 380 are representing uh, an important, uh, uh, let's say, treatment for different strategies such as cardiac surgery, severe infection, serious burn, ARDS, trauma, sepsis, and pancreatitis. And uh, this contains a neutral macroporous uh, uh, beads with pore size corresponding to a molecular weight of 10 to 60 kilodalton. Uh, different studies have been done on removal of humoral mediators. And you see here in severe sepsis, for example, uh, using standard therapy versus standard therapy plus hemoperfusion with significant reduction in uh, 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 interleukin-6 and interleukin-8 uh, as a representative of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines, but also an impact on 
clinical effect because the SOFA score uh, presented a significant reduction over time compared to the control uh, group. Uh, of course, a reduction of pro-inflammatory mediators is demonstrated. And in some cases, there was uh, a different uh, uh, mortality at 28 days. So the interesting aspect is that this is a new therapy that can be somehow considered for uh, uh, multiple organ dysfunction syndrome and sepsis. And this is the case of, uh, again, another study in which you see the different survival uh, uh, curves uh, in, the two, in the two groups. In particular, uh, there is significant change of all cytokines after 48 hours of treatment, uh, very different in the two groups. And uh, there is a, a significant effect of saturation approximately at 12 hours, although uh, uh, the cartridges have been utilized up to 48 hours. Uh, other sorbents, such as the HA230, has been mostly utilized for intoxication, drug overdose, biotoxins, uh, pesticides, uh, paraquat, uh, rodenticides, and industrial toxins. And uh, uh, different cases, uh, especially using cases of organophosphorus poisoning, have shown uh, 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 a, a specific kinetics uh, with the a, a improvement in survival in the treated group compared to the control uh, uh, group. Again, this is uh, uh, one uh, uh, example of how repeated uh, hemoperfusion uh, and more frequent therapies uh, is more effective than a single session so that uh, the endpoints that are considered should also be considered in terms of repeated hemoperfusion section compared to one single uh, uh, session. Uh, again, this is uh, a reduction in uh, plasma paraquat concentration, and this is very important to be done in a very early phase because the high clearance can provide a dynamic uh, uh, transport from tissues into the blood and then subsequent removal. So, Clearance can be increased by more frequent uh, rather than longer duration of therapies because of the potential uh, saturation of the cartridges. Uh, with Tiago, we have published this uh, paper in Nature Reviews Nephrologies on the possibility to use sorbents uh, in COVID-19. And they have in fact been used extensively in patients uh, with severe manifestation of COVID-19. As you can see here, the so-called systemic cytokine release syndrome is uh, 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 possible after pneumonia and uh, aggravated by ECMO or mechanical ventilation leading to endothelial dysfunction and organ failure. But also the other aspect is that both pro-inflammatory mediators causing death because of inflammation or anti-inflammatory mediators causing uh, deaths because of immunosuppression can be partially limited, blocked by hemoperfusion, uh, uh, cutting the peaks of the highest uh, 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 cytokine circulating in that moment. We cannot measure in a specific moment uh, because of the short half-life of these uh, substances, but we know that the capacity are specifically to remove different substances can uh, basically re-equilibrate the system, leading to endothelial protection and organ support. And you can do this uh, with hemoperfusion or hemoperfusion combined with uh, uh, CRT therapy. This is the case of a COVID-19 patient admitted to fever, hypotension, respiratory failure, undergoing mechanical ventilation, Hemodynamic instability and high cytokine levels were shown together with high inflammatory parameters. It was treated uh, for three consequent days uh, with hemoperfusion and CRT with subsequent hemodynamic stabilization and normalization of cytokine levels, decreasing inflammatory parameters and improved pulmonary exchanges until on day 12, it was extubated. 
not only clinical aspects or uh, let's say uh, chemical aspects uh, such as uh, removal of cytokine and improvement uh, of uh, 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 mean arterial pressure with reduction of noradrenaline requirement, but also improvement in the monocyte function that uh, uh, reconstitute the capacity to respond to DNF and uh, uh, increase the capacity of phagocytosis. And in particular, uh, 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 re-establish the possibility to present the antigen as demonstrated by the increase in expression of HLA-DR on the surface of monocytes. Finally, sorbents uh, can also be utilized as they were in the past to regenerate uh, dialysate. And this was the case for the so-called ready cartridge that was used uh, uh, using small amount of water in a recirculation condition. But more recently, this has been utilized in the so-called wearable artificial kidney, where uh, the attempt is to create a miniaturized system. Here you see a daughter and mother dialyzing with the new system and the uh, classic system. And this is a, a possibility. Another possibility in the future will be to combine absorption uh, directly on the external space of the fibers or directly in the structure of the fiber co-extruding sorbent and olofibers. Absorption can also be utilized in uh, um, peritoneal dialysis. Our prototype was a system for recirculation of uh, dialysate, utilizing a double lumen catheter of our design in our institute and a special uh, uh, box with a disposable kit of rechargeable uh, uh, sorbent devices that could be uh, utilized to regenerate uh, fluid. And this is also a, 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 a prototype from uh, a, a, another company that uh, has proposed a sort of belt uh, with the regeneration of the sovereign cartridges. So in conclusion, I think that absorption represents an interesting option for blood purification. Different sorbent materials are available and modern chemistry can help. Optimal biocompatibility and mechanical strength and low toxicity are essential. Absorption capacity can be tested with specific isotherms. Different options are available for utilization of sorbents in practice. Sorbents may be the doorway to wearable dialysis and waterless dialysis. And finally, they represent a new frontier in extracorporeal blood purification. With this, I take the liberty to invite you all to the 40th anniversary Vicenza course, June 14 to 16, 2022 in Vicenza. We will have space for approximately 150 uh, registrants in person that will have a specific session face-to-face uh, uh, -face, uh, with the faculty while in the afternoon, uh, we will have a hybrid uh, uh, session where people in presence and people from remote can participate uh, in a virtual component. I think this will be a unique opportunity to come back to Vicenza. Hopefully the Omicron will be over by June and uh, we really wait you. But uh, the closer number in presence uh, requires an early registration. So please uh, uh, contact uh, our, uh, uh, our website, uh, www.irrip.com and www.npsevents.it to see the conditions of registration. And with this, I thank you very much for your attention.